gigantic masses in Earth's mantle, untouched for more than 4 billion years. This is on Geology In. It's a study by American Geophysicals Union. Ancient distinct continent-sized regions of rock. They're isolated since before the collision that created the moon. This is the theory concerning this four and a half billion years ago. They exist hundreds of miles below the Earth's crust, offering a window into the building blocks of our planet. This is according to new research. This new study at the American Geophysical Union Journal Geochemistry, Geophysics, Geosystems, they use models in order to trace the location and origin of volcanic rock samples found throughout the whole world back to two solid continents in the deep mantle. This new research suggests that specific giant rock regions have existed for four and a half billion years since Earth's beginning. Previously, scientists thought that separated continents in the deep mantle came from subducted oceanic plates, but this new study indicates these distinct regions may have been formed from an ancient magma ocean that solidified during the beginning of Earth's formation and may have survived the massive moon-creating impact. Yes, there is a theory that something hit the Earth and a blob came off the Earth and created our moon. Determining the masses origin reveals more details about their evolution and composition as well as clues about primordial Earth's history and the Earth uh, early solar system, according to studies authors. It's amazing these regions have survived most of Earth's volcanic history relatively untouched. This is their uh, theory. Curtis Williams, geologist at University of California, Davis, was the lead author of the study. Looking inwards, the mantle is a layer of rock stretching 2,900 kilometers or 1,802 miles down inside the Earth. Earth's molten liquid metallic core lies between the mantle. The core mantle boundary is where the solid mantle meets the metallic liquid core. Scientists knew from past seismic imaging stu studies that the two individual rock bodies existed near the core mantle boundary. One solid rock body is under Africa and the other is under the Pacific Ocean. Seismic waves, the vi vibrations produced by earthquakes, move differently through these masses than the rest of the mantle and that suggests that they have distinct physical properties from the surrounding mantle. But geologists could not determine whether seismic events, seismic waves, move differently through the core mantle continents because of differences in their temperature, mineral composition or density, or some comb uh, combination of all these properties. That meant that they could only hypothesize about the separate rocky masses origin in history. Quote, we had all of these geochemical measurements from Earth's surface, but we didn't know how to relate these geochemical measurements to regions of Earth's interior. We had all of these geophysical images of Earth's interior, but we did not know how to relate that to the geochemistry at Earth's surface, Williams said. Primitive and material plumes, Williams and colleagues wanted to determine the distinct masses, origin, and evolution to learn more about Earth's composition and Earth's past. To do this, they needed to be able to identify samples at Earth's surface with higher concentrations of primitive, primitive material and then trace those samples back to their origins. Scientists often take rock samples from volcanic regions like Hawaii and Iceland, where deep mantle plumes or columns of extremely hot rock rise from the areas under the core, melt in the shallow mantle and emerge then far from tectonic fault lines. These samples are made of igneous rock and they're created from cooling lava. The study's authors use an extensed existing database of samples and also collected new samples from volcanically active areas like Bellany Islands in Antarctica. Geologists can measure specific isotopes in igneous rocks to learn more about the origin and evolution of the Earth. 
Some isotopes like helium-3 are primordial, meaning that they were created during the Big Bang. Rocks closer to Earth's crust have less of the isotope than rocks that are deeper underground that were never exposed to the air. Samples with more helium-3 are thought to come from more primitive rocks in the mantle. The researchers found some of the samples they studied had more helium-3, and that indicated that they may have come from primitive rocks that were deep from within the Earth's mantle. The researchers then used a new model to trace how these primitive samples could have gotten to the Earth's surface from the mantle. Geological mo models assumed plumes, plumes rise vertically up from deep within the mantle to the Earth's surface. But plumes can move off course, deflected due to various reasons. The new model took account into account this plume election and the deflection, allowing the study's author to trace the samples back to the two giant masses near the core mantle boundary. The combination of the two isotope formations and new model allowed the researchers to determine the composition of the two giant masses, theorizing how they may have formed. Understanding the composition of specific rock masses near the core mantle boundary helps conceptualize ancient earth shaping processes that lead to the modern day mantle, according to the study's authors. They say it's a more robust framework to try to answer these questions in terms of not making these assumptions of vertically rising mat material, but rather to take into account how much deflection these plumes have seen, Williams said. And this above is based on materials provided by American Geophysical Union, and it's on geologyin.com. And upcoming you'll see a diagram of the Earth's core, the solid liquid, the solid inner core, the outer core liquid, the softer mantle. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, 
And we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.